So in the second part of this unit on interpolation and spline fitting, we're going to look at the simplest case, which is 1D interpolation. So um, 1D interpolation is done by the interp 1D function. And uh, what we're going to do, well, just before we start showing you how things are, how to use this, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So uh, we just need to import numpy and we need to import matplotlib so we can show some nice plots. Um, and we also need to import the, um, uh, and we're going to do some 3D plotting as well. So we're going to import a, 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 some backplotlib functions for doing 3D plotting. And then we're in a position to go and import the interp1d function from scipy.interpolate. We're also going to have to have some data that we want to interpolate. Um, and so included with this unit, I've got a data file, uh, which I'm going to read in with gen from txt. Uh, how to use gen from txt is covered in the working with files units. Um, so you can go look at those for details there. OK, and also just as sort of a setting up thing for convenience, I'm going to define a function that's going to make uh, a nice plot for me. So I've, I've defined this, this plot fig function, and it's going to take some X and Y data. Um, it's going to let me set what the limits are, and it's going to do a bunch of matplotlib uh, just to make things um, nice uh, and, and tidy. Uh, and so here what I'm going to do is going to plot the X and Y data. That's the data I just loaded in uh, from the file. Um, and show you an example of part of it. And you'll see it's going to smoothly varying a curve with a dip in it. So what SciPy interpolate interp1d is going to do for us is it's going to create something that's going to act a bit like a function. So it's going to make something that behaves like a function that can give us an intermediate values of x. So in other words, it's going to uh, uh, sorry, we, we're going to give it the intermediate values of x, and it's going to give us back uh, an estimate for what f of x should have been for that particular value of x. So in order to go and use it um, in its simplest form, all we have to do is give it the x and y data points that we, we started off with, the ones that you like our measured data or our, our individual data points. And so in this case, that we, we're um, setting the result of calling interp1d into something called interp function. And interp function is something you can treat like a function. In other words, you can call it. And so if I call it with minus 0 0.95, what I'm saying is please go and tell me what was the value of, um, what would have been the estimate by intermediate value at minus 0 0.95, even though I didn't have a data point there. So just going to illustrate this, what we're going to go and do is we're going to um, go and calculate and then display some interpolated values that lie between all our sets of data points. So the code to do that is straightforward. We start off with the same plot, the original data. The red lines are just straight lines drawn between the data points um, to help you see where the data points go. Um, and then I create my interpolating function. Uh, sorry, first of all, I create uh, a set of new x values. So these are the x values that I want to go and work out my estimates, my inter interpolated values for. And then I use that interp function I created on the previous slide, and I give it the new values of x, um, and that then gives me a set of interpolated uh, y values. And I can go and just plot those, and those are the blue crosses. And what you'll see is those blue crosses do indeed lie at various points in between the red spots. And if you look carefully, they always lie on those red lines. Uh, and the reason why they always lie on those red lines is that by default, interp1d is going to do linear interpolation. And so when I join the dots, the red dots with a red line, then that's the same as basically doing a linear interpolation between the two uh, red points, and so the blue crosses lie exactly uh, on the uh, the red dot on, on the red lines. But interp1d has a kind parameter which allows me to do what's called cubic interpolation. And the difference between linear and cubic interpolation is that in linear interpolation, I just draw a straight line between each pair of, of spots, whereas in cubic interpolation, I create a cubic curve between sets of four spots. 
I need four spots in order to to create a cubic function. Um, so by setting that to um, that kind of parameter to cubic, I can go and do that instead. And so here I've done it both ways. So again, I create my plot. Um, I create my new x values, my interpolating x values, uh, and then I've done uh, interp one uh, d with kind equals linear to create a linear interpolating function, and I go and create some interpolated y values from it, and then I make a cubic interpolation function by again calling interp one d, but now specifying kind is cubic, and I create a bunch of y values by calling that cubic interpolation function with my new values of x. And I can go and plot those um, linear and cubic interpolated values on the graph as the blue uh, diagonal crosses and the green um, uh, up-down crosses. Um, and what you can see there is that the blue crosses lie exactly on the red lines, but the green crosses are slightly off it. And that's because if you were to draw a nice smooth cubic curve, through the red data points, then it would slightly deviate away from the red straight lines and instead it would go through the green crosses. Um, so if you've got nicely smoothly varying data like this, probably cubic interpolation is going to be better um, at the expense of being slightly slower to go and do. So it's a trade-off. If you have lots of data points that are really close together, you can get away with linear interpolation. Um, it's a bit faster to set up. If your data points are further apart or your data is particularly curvy, particularly peaky, um, uh, then uh, you want to use cubic interpolation in order to get a better result. OK, so that's what I've just said. So because that interpolating function you've created behaves just like a function, you can go and use it with the things we looked at in the previous unit in unit one of this series using f min and f solve to determine minima uh, and roots and if you do the necessary work to find maxima as well. So for example here I'm going to use f solve to find the root of my um, cubic interpolation function and it can go away and go and calculate what that root should be. Um, but there are kind of good reasons why you want to be a bit careful and you want to think about whether that's the right thing to go and do. It's not necessarily the wrong thing to do, but often it's the wrong thing to go and do. So again, first of all, when you're interpolating, you are essentially inventing data points. So you can't know for sure whether your function uh, really should vary between the data points you've measured in the way you think it should do, um, either linearly or cubically or however. And then you start trying to find minima uh, or roots in it. Well, there's going to be a certain amount of uncertainty in that because you've made a, an assumption about how your data should be varying. You can also only interpolate between your data points. Interpolation is different from extrapolation. Interpolation is between data points. That's the interpreter um, and polite, I guess points. Um, extrapolation is going outside your data range and interpolation does not do extrapolation and if you try to call your interpolation function with a value of x that's outside your range of data points it's going to throw an error and if you then try and do f min or f solve in that condition it's going to fall over and fail so it's not going to work. And then finally interpolation always just joins the dots. So you're assuming the data points you've measured are more is exactly accurate on the line of the thing you're actually interested in. And of course, if you're dealing with experimental data, that's definitely not going to be the case. You always have noise in experimental data. If you're dealing with simulated data or um, theoretically calculated data, you might well have artifacts in your data that mean you're not exactly on the data line, that you have a little bit of scatter when you look in very fine, uh, fine detail of your curves. So we can sort of make an example of that. Um, if I deliberately add a bunch of noise to the data um, and then start uh, doing either linear or cubic interpolation on that, then you can really see kind of how what the problem is going to be. So on this plot here, the blue is our original data curve. Uh, it forms a nice smooth curve. 
And then what I've done is I've just added a, 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 a bit of noise to my data. So the red data points are all shifted up and down. And now when I ask it to do cubic interpolation, you see it is indeed doing a nice smooth cubic curve through all the data points. And you can see it's making a very nice curve through all the data points, but it doesn't resemble the blue curve particularly closely there. <clears throat> and that comes a problem when I try to um, interpolate between, when I try to, try to use something that's like fmin uh, or f solved to locate either the, the minimum or the root. What I'm really trying to do is find the minimum or the root of the blue curve, but I'm using a function which is going to give me the green curve. And the green curve has a minima all over the place um, and potentially cross zero all over the place, depending on how much noise I've got. And so you can see here, this is what happened. I'm going to do fmin. It merely goes and says, oh, yes, you can go and um, uh, get a minimum. And I use f solve and you can, you can f solve it. But the actual values it found are not where the blue, the original data set were going, they're where the green noisy data does. <laughs> And so you can really end up with all kinds of, um, especially with something like fmin, you end up with all kinds of local minima and not anything resembling the real function minima. So interpolating and then using fmin, again, very kind of dangerous thing. You want to think very carefully about whether it is safe and the right thing to go and do. So always, uh, if you do, can't emphasize this enough, if you have a, a proper physics model, that you can go and use go and fit that data with your proper physics model that we show in unit four rather than interpolating or using splines